2014 was a strong year for SpongeBob SquarePants Flash games. It had a good start with the SquarePants Mysteries, which came out on January 10th and played out as a series of mystery-themed episodes. It was also a play that you needed to get good ratings for. It was magnificently detailed and highly impressive. Easily one of the highest quality Flash games to come out of Nick.com. So let's see how the rest of the year measures up to it. Another big one was Bikini Bottom Bopum, a whack-a-mole inspired game where you control Plankton and hit the Spongebob characters. We also have comic panel cutscenes between stages. Plankton sees an ad for the theme park Glove Universe, <laughs> a bit of foreshadowing in this video, and it's holding a contest to see who can build the best game. As such, he makes Karen build this whack-a-mole machine while he sits and scribbles on his blueprints. Then when the game begins, you're only met with Spongebob's to whack. You drag the mouse across the screen to take him out whenever you see him. You have to hit a certain number of bobs to reach a goal and move to the next stage. Then more characters and obstacles will appear and you'll have to use different methods to take them out. You have to click Patrick, drag your mouse over bomb fuses to put them out, avoid jellyfish entirely, double click on Squidward, click the Garys in numeric order, and wait for Mr. Krabs to finish counting his money before you click him. Every few stages, Plankton will destroy the machine and have to build a new one, so the layout will change and things will get harder. But you'll also get handy power-ups, such as clocks that give you more time, ice that freezes everyone, and chum that takes everyone out at once. Then at the end, Plankton wins the prize, but instead of winning cash, he just wins $5 million worth of free rides. But hey, at least he still got to win. Now this game is really fun. Not especially hard either. It does give you a challenge though, especially as it goes along, but it's still really enjoyable. Though it is kind of funny how we have an official Spongebob game where we literally whack the main characters. So, I heard you're an FBI informant, Patrick. Not the face, Spongebob, please. But yeah, this one's really good. So let's make mention of another game based on Glove Universe. Also named that. This was a compilation of games based on the episode Glove World R.I.P. It was carnival themed and had a system where you could earn tickets to unlock bigger games with. There were also Valentine's Day games, but those weren't added until 2015. All of them are styled like carnival booths and the environment is really well drawn. It almost feels like a successor to Bikini Bottom Carnival. Most of the games are pretty simple to understand, but there are some that really stand out too. For one, Fiery Fist of Pain 2, which costs the hefty price of five tickets, is somewhat of a sequel to the popular game Fiery Tracks of Fury. Thing is though, it's really easy to die in this, so you might end up wasting five tickets if you fall into one of the first obstacles. But another game that's notable is this target shooter because the monsters from the Monster Island series are in it. They really wanted to remind you of this series because one was also featured in the SquarePants Mysteries. Some of the other games can also be a lot more challenging than you might expect, and Hammer Slammer took me way too many tries to get right. But another feature this game has is the Great Wombozy, a fortune teller that gives you a random prediction for the price of two tickets. Funnily enough, this character was also featured as the villain in the app's Spongebob Game Frenzy. Didn't realize this random Flash game character made such a cultural impact. It's Frankenbob all over again. But yeah, this game is incredible and has way more detail than you might expect. So far, we've had some pretty big games this year, so let's keep this roller coaster moving. This is Grand Sand Fortress. Listen to this music. And oh, that's certainly a shape right there, isn't it? This may look like a Tetris clone, but it's actually very different. You lower rows of sand blocks to build a wall in front of SpongeBob so he's shielded when Plankton sends his relatives to attack. Bricks and rocks are harder for them to break, so use them to the best of your ability. Not the most complicated game out there, but a lot of fun. Another simple one is Barnacles My Face, which is based on the episode Face Freeze. It also had a Lunchable sponsorship. Oddly creepy music for this type of game, though. Basically, you drag tiles of a character to a grid, then it gets shaken up into a photo of that character making a strange face. Then you turn the tiles to complete the puzzle. 
That's really all it is. Just a neat little puzzle game. I mean, what did you want with Face Freeze? A game where you smack the characters whenever they try to make a goofy face? But now here's Hurricane Havoc, a foreboding one where you're flying on a bubble through a stormy landscape. You click to keep yourself flying, but you have to time your bubble bursting so you can land on these tiny little islands. Otherwise, it'll burst at a lot less opportune time and you'll fall in the ocean. Also, Plankton will summon lightning to hurt you. And watch out for jellyfish. It's okay. But before we move on to some interesting developments, let's just briefly run over one other game that came out this year. Bikini Bottom Brawlers. Yep, my past is really coming back to haunt me with this one. On top of that, when you start a match, you better be in it for the long haul because there is no pause feature to be found. Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. But it's a really cool fighting game featuring different Spongebob characters. Unlike most Nickelodeon fighting games, this one was more centered around its story mode rather than just generally fighting. As a result, the characters you fight in later stages are significantly stronger than the ones in earlier fights. Still, there was a multiplayer mode for a time, but they got rid of it. At the same time, you can really shake up a fight because there are numerous items you can use to your advantage. Not what you might expect from a fighting game, but pretty good. And yes, it has a pause button. Now let's never mention this game again. So now I'd like to take a look at a very interesting collab that took place this year. Take a wild guess at what Spongebob decided to make a couple Flash games in collaboration with. Sonic. Yeah, I know, a shocking team-up of extraordinary proportions. Who would have guessed we would ever see Spongebob and Sonic in official games together? Now that is a collab worth checking out. By the way, we're talking about the restaurant. What, did you think it was something else? Two games that were made as part of this collab were SpongeBob's Wacky Underwater Adventure and Wacky Roller Race. Unfortunately, it seems Underwater Adventure is completely lost, but Roller Race is still accessible. <laughs> This is a roller skating game where you race other characters by drifting across the street, avoiding obstacles at the same time. It's oddly fun, but there isn't much to it, though there are a ton of codes you can enter for unlockables. These came in Sonic Kids Meals. You can also unlock other characters. But sadly, this game is a little glitchy in some areas nowadays, but it's still playable for the most part. I guess we can say this truly was a wacky collab. But now let's start to wrap things up with a few games put out by one company we haven't seen too much of. 7-2 didn't make a ton of Spongebob games, but whenever they did, they really left a mark. We've already checked out Mystery Train and Guinness O' Ripley's Extreme Arcade of World Records, which were really good in their own rights, and they also made the goo from Goo Lagoon, which we've also looked at. But these last two games of theirs are really fascinating. Servin' Up Seconds is a game that can be played with one or two players, but I highly recommend two-player mode. In single player, you only control Spongebob, so Patrick's movements at the bottom of the screen are a lot harder to work around. He kind of just keeps moving and it's hard to line up your shot with him. So you see a customer's order at the side of the screen and try to throw the correct ingredients down for Patrick to catch them. Again, a good two-player game, but a whole lot harder in one-player mode. This is also a Thanksgiving game. I am making this video in November, so you can consider this our holiday special. After October, I'm never dedicating a whole month to holiday specials again. But now, for the final game I'd like to cover here, let's take a look at one of my favorite SpongeBob Flash games of all time. This is Sketch It, Guess It. In this, we're given an outline to draw something on, then Patrick will try to guess what it is. You have to be good at it too, because the sooner he guesses it, the better off you'll be. His guesses can be really funny too. Tax exemption! SpongeBob! Scented pine cones! It's the evil doodle! Whale! Big toe! A high school diploma? You might also be hit with obstacles such as the lights going out. This game is a riot and you can have so much fun with it. It's really creative and well made. Not to mention you can get a good chuckle out of Patrick's confident delivery of drastically wrong answers. This was a really good game to come out this year. But as we saw, there were quite a few really good ones that came out in 2014. I think this makes for a good spot to end this adventure. As we can see, while games weren't coming out as frequently in the 2010s as in the 2000s, they were still really high quality and worth giving a shot. 
Companies like Workin' Man and 7-2 were keeping the spongy spirit alive through these online activities, and many of them aged really well. This was a pretty good year for the website. SpongeBob Flash games would continue to come out, and a few other big ones would hit the scene in later years, so there's still quite a bit to see. But for now, we can appreciate these amazing ones we were given in 2014. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on the accounts in the description below, and tune in for our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.